this semi-final in Croatia. The semi-final here in the comeback last year at the Irish International 2014. On the mic, Sam is here to uh, give me his expert opinion on women's singles. <laughs> I know it's something that Sam loves to watch. Uh, Some lot of ladies singles, <laughs> one round the tour. An interesting one, Sam. Uh, Italia against Olga, two players who have played a lot each against each other this year, three times. They played each other, and uh, for me, it's a very difficult one to call. The way I see it, Mark, uh, Olga's a very good all-round player. Some really good yeah. shots. And uh, her Danish opponent is very sharp. Uh, she can really pick off winners at any stage in the rally, so it's going to be a very interesting contest. Yeah, it's certainly one of Natalia's strong shots. That, uh, it's, it's, it's an around-the-head cross-court stick smash. The Danes are all very good at that. I was impressed yesterday by Olga her match in the semi-final against Linda where she lost the first game and came back and won that is very unconan uh, knowing Olga as long as I do sometimes if she loses the first game you can maybe bet against it going against her but that was an impressive uh, an impressive turnaround yesterday Olga has been an informed player the last couple of months so it's a great one for Olga it's had tough matches all the way through she has, yeah. She's been uh, she's she's been pushed, which I think will stand to her. But um, this time last year, of course, she made her comeback after that long layoff from injury and got to the semi-final here. So it's been a happy court for Conan. Olga nearest us. Talia furthest away. That's a super shot. That one sometimes looks quite easy, but just watch how she takes the speed out of it here in the replay. She's stepping very close to the net. 
you could see Natalia was actually moving to her forehand side. She had expected so she expected something straight. Game still taking a little bit of time to get flowing here. Yeah, these, as I said, they've met each other in a few times in the last couple of months. And uh, Olga beat Natalia in their recent encounter at the Swiss International. Olga went to the final on that occasion. The last time that Natalia won was at the Orléans International at the quarter final, which Koch Roda went on to win that tournament. And they're both players who spent, who spent this year coming back from injury. Yeah. and uh, coming through qualification earlier in the year with zero ranking to now being uh, I think Olga's in 44 in the world and Natalia 62. And in terms of Olympic qualification, Mark, how is it looking for these two girls? Well, I think Lena Karsfeld has it wrapped up yeah. in terms of the Danish, uh, from a Danish perspective. Olga has zero interest in the Olympics. Okay. Her interest is in enjoying badminton and being on court and doing what she does with no pressure that comes uh, from an Olympic qualification. We can see how it has affected Karen Schnaz. Yeah. Of all the players on tour, you know what it's like. <laughs> you know, the stress that goes along with Olympic qualification. Karen, to me, just seems to be affected by it more. But you can also see Olga not uh, consciously hunting her down, but the ranking gap is closing and yeah. closing. And uh, every week. But uh, Olympics is certainly not on the radar for Olga. You can see the last couple of months she's been enjoying her band and she's injury free now. And you can see she's starting to get back to you know the old form we remember from Olga from maybe a couple of years ago. Last couple of years have just been on and off matches in between injuries. Yeah, this is the first real year, as I said, it was come back this time last year. So 12 months ago, she made her comeback. So this has been now 12 months injury free for her, which is just huge. It's a big landmark. Yeah. She really has been a player in Europe that can definitely take the game to the Asians. And it just needs that block of training staying injury free, she's got the shot, she's got the game, it's just whether she can keep herself in good shape. Uh, one of three, one of only three players I think the statistic is who has beaten uh, Wang Yihan, Wang Shihan and uh, before her uh, Zhang, uh, Zhang Nan, yeah. uh, Olga has beaten the three of them along with uh, Tina Baun and uh, Juliana Schenk, the only other two players in Europe. 2000s that have done that. It just shows you what her her top A game is. Mm. It really is. Yeah, it's world class yeah. when she brings it on the court. And what she has benefited from also was she, this year and last year she's gone to Indonesia for an eight-week training stint. Yeah. And you could see how, how that benefited her at the beginning of the season. She cruised the two titles. Uh, and if she can get that physical conditioning correct you know she's always I suppose the injury is always in the back of your mind but uh, she can get that correct singles if, you can, if you can last the distance in a three game match as well as having uh, the shots that she does you're on to a winner that's a good start from the German of course formerly uh, Poland and uh, originally from Belarus the same town in Belarus as Nadia Ziev know that? I didn't know, you no, know. Yeah. So they've produced some great players. Yeah, little, great little, town. Little town. She has to be happy with that start. She's taking this up early, moving it quick. A very, very positive start. It would be a good thing. There's not really that many long, long rallies from either player. They're both going for the shots. A little bit of all or nothing at the minute. Mm. I think that has to be over Olga right now. Right While, while both girls have come through three set semi-finals, Olga's was certainly a lot more comfortable, certainly in the third game against uh, Linda winning 21-7. I remember sitting here uh, watching Natalia 
through the window here again that semi-final against Cathy Cormoff in it was a war of attrition you know so there's a it has to be, has to be factored in I think yeah I think she also had a tough match in the way where she was right. right up until the end of the third and yes, then she yes. had some great shots to pull away so she's had some tough matches under her belt yeah four matches she's played in three of them have been three games including the first round against Xiaoyi Sin Li yeah Chinese Taipei yeah. really up coming there as well I think that shows the standard of Lady Singles this week is probably the strongest discipline when you look at the rankings throughout. Yeah, I was writing my preview, you know, to pick any one of 10, 11 players yeah. who, who could win it. Some of the first rounds were really dangerous matches. It's the first poor error, I think, from Olga, going for that cross net. And if it's an area that sh sometimes she needs to work on, it, it, it's more uh, keeping that concentration, keeping the level up, not switching off. So very happy in her personal life these days. You can see her now boyfriend coaching her from the from 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 the from the chair. Alain Roy of Slovenia. The dual role as a player coach, mm. right? We spoke a lot about Olga, but what about her opponent, Mark? You've probably seen Natalia. her from the juniors. I I I I've always liked Natalia because why? She's feisty. Yeah. She's a fighter. Something a little bit different. Sometimes the Danes are a little bit straight-faced, and uh, cold is not quite the word. But you know what? You know what I'm yeah. saying. And uh, she has this feisty fighting character. Never say die. And then again, I, I'm. It always amazes me. And these two people, these two girls, are very much similar in some respect. That they've both fought back from a long-term injury. And anyone that can do that is, uh, is you know, should be a real hero in anyone's book, really, because it's not easy. She has a lot of weapons, and certainly uh, around the head with that cross court stick smashes. Things are so good at can be so dangerous. She really perfected that shot. I worked on a lot of times. I think both these girls, when you have those injuries, sometimes that gives you that chance to focus and find your hunger for bouncing again. Both of them are really hungry to win this title here in Ireland. I think Natalia looked a little bit nervous. Starting off, and all of a sudden, she's starting to find a rhythm. That's uh, five in a row. Exactly what Olga needed there, just yeah. a cheap point in the Forehand serve. Yeah, she loves that forehand flatty yeah. serve. Uh, sometimes it's effective, but uh, certainly in the opening game yesterday against the Cheery, she was all over it, literally smashing it back. I think it's a very good uh, option, the flat serve. If, if your opponent doesn't read it, then you have them under. Yeah, defense yeah. straight away, but if they read it, it's so far you would expect Hawk Road because she's so tall just to pick it off, but at the minute Olga seems to be getting away with it and she's you know, mixing it up one short, one flick. Called in. Yeah, called in. 16. Hesitation, I think, from Conan. Was suffering a little bit this week with a cold, also. You know, the best country to be in if you're suffering from cold. <laughs> it's been terrible weather all week here at the Irish Open. Smash cross court. This time, reading it re well, Conan. See the replay here. Long way out. And you can see Olga is really trying to keep the game flat. There's that flat left in the end. And it's not opening up the court there again. Flat left, flat push. Three line calls in that back line. And she's 
Two or three, but at the minute you can see Olga's really playing a lot of flat shots, not opening up the court, not playing these long rallies. And the top road doesn't seem to have an answer to it at the minute. It's not really obvious what her game plan is. I think it's a shot every girl needs for Lady Singles. Really opens up the distance. Very dangerous around the head, as I said. I think for Cockroach, she needs to be ready for these flat shots now and try and use her reach to pick them off. from both girls. There we go again. Fantastic. Drive into the body. The winner. Just watching the replay. She knows where it's going to come back. They're ready with very good look. Still a good rally. Here comes the mind games. It almost it looked to me like Natalia was ready. Yeah. Thirteen minutes it takes the German to game point. <coughs> really good variation in the serve. Four. Composure. Seven. Natalia. Sixteen twenty. An easy shot to fluff into the net, that backhand kill. Many of us mere mortals would know that feeling. Everyone can relate to that at some stage in their career. Some of those points, certainly from a defensive aspect, you know, uh, two or three years ago, you wouldn't have seen Olga fighting for. She's found this new sort of deep down fighting spirit all of a sudden. Same, same as Natalia, you know, when, you, when, you, when you've been laid off with injury, you know that every shuttle out there is worth fighting for. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, persistence paying off, and uh, it was a good lead that Conan got. I think she was leading 14-5 at one point, and that set her up for the game. But Natalia Cockrell is back in this, Sam, and uh, I would expect the second game to be much closer. I think it's very interesting because Olga was playing a little bit on the edge where it was so flat. Mm. She was getting away with it, but then at the end, those last couple of rallies, Cockrell would start to read it and then take it off. So, uh, second test is going to go one or two ways. Olga's going to stick to that game plan and work, or yeah. Kanko is going to step up and start making winners of it. So, see? I would expect also the Danes to hurry up because I know they have a flight at 4.20. And uh, I know a little a young Anders Anderson is sweating <laughs> whether he's going to make his flight or not. I don't know if they're going to... Flights are going today. A lot of flights Actually, being Actually, a lot of cancellations, wind, so. yeah. Maybe staying here anyway. I think a lot of the English have been caught. I didn't get away this morning. I see some of them were back over uh, Sam Parson sitting over there uh, watching after spending 26 hours in the airport. Or something. Yeah, so interesting. I think one thing that Natalia does suffer with is nerves. Sometimes in the big occasions we can see her she started off nervous, there's no doubt about it, when, when Olga got into that healthy lead. And she settled a little bit, and I'm wondering when it gets down to the nitty-gritty of winning the tournament, will those nerves uh, slip back in? But uh, one thing she has done, she has won. She knows how to win. She won in Orleans in a very, very good, uh, probably one of the best challenge events on the circuit. Have you played there? No. No. Uh, there, no. Phenomenal event. And... Uh, 
she won really well that week. She's also playing in one of the best clubs in Denmark, yeah. so, so you know that brings a lot of pressure matches, week in, week out, club games. So I think it's going to you know, be a matter of time where she gets used to these situations. She's got a good competitive group of lady singles coming up now in Denmark. Yeah. Summer pushing each other. All pushing each other, but Lena Carsfeld just seems to have pulled away from the others yeah. at the moment. Sandra Maria Jensen has been out for a while with a hand injury. Uh, Natalia this year has been coming back. Anathia Matson has shown some form of recent weeks, except going out first round this week after winning in Wales last week. Well, yeah, up, so of course. Yeah, who there. all got beat in the first round? That was a you know a win that really set Olga up for the tournament. Yeah, you know, she could have been going home very early or good win, confidence. That was brought on to the next round. That's the shot. We were just forced to play hard. A little bit lucky. Cockroach just not ready there with the racket. Knew what you wanted to do. Olga, of course, when she was in Poland, used to play a mean mixed doubles with Mikhail yeah. Logos at one point. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think you can see that in her game right yeah, now. Yeah. You know, that flat play comes from playing doubles, playing against men as well. It's a really, really good pill to have for uh, Lady Single Fair. She also obviously is outside of the German national team, so uh, lives and trains down with the boys down in Saarbrook. Yeah. Cool. It's not a bad place to be, there's a lot of good bands in Saarbrook. Of course, home of Bitburger Open as well. Mm. It's really, really the best club in Germany out there. Yeah, they seem to be really. Uh, Grabbing hold of the German league this this year, Bishop Sheim. Mulheim certainly have done nothing. Yeah. It's your club, Refrat, that are really putting the yeah. pressure on more than more than anyone else. We're second coming into Christmas, so very tough league. Also, Olga for singles in that uh, club, along with uh, Mark Schwebler, Mike Fuchs, and others. And then the young players like Marvin Seidel and players like this coming through in that club also. Oh, and they brought in Isabel Hertrich this year. Also Samantha Barning. Samantha, Holland. yeah. They're a good squad of players. I think most clubs are doing that this year, signing a lot of players because they know players won't be there for... Um, for all the matches yeah, because of Olympics, yeah. So yeah, a lot of people are travelling a lot. Olga, I believe, has uh, worked with an Indonesian coach. I'm sure of a name. Yeah, uh, I can't remember his name. He's the one that sort of opened up the avenue to train each summer in Indonesia. I think she's, she, look, she's just a player and a personality that didn't fit into a federation style system. Yeah. Sometimes that's how it is in Bamba, and you have it is an individual sport within a team system. Sometimes these individuals are called in. That was looked like a mile out. Five, six. See it here in the replay. Oh. In terms of badminton, that was a country mile out. Yeah, it looks yeah. very yeah. close. Hard to call. But I think this is a shot that Hawk Road has to be doing a lot more. Yeah. And really forcing Olga to get a ticket low. There again, it's good. She's not ready. That's better. She's still stretching for that shot, even though she could take one step, maybe put it on the floor. Six. Good stretch from Italian seed in the replay. Did well to control it. Need a couple of critical points come up here, even though it's early in the second set. Oh. 
Yeah, that was good, really good patience from Olga. You see how she takes, reaches forward, takes that net so early, early as she can. But that clear, the, the, the shot before, you know, that you don't have to, it's good for all the kids, you don't have to be smashing it, knocking it down every time. That set up the attacking opportunity for her. Olga, slight advantage here, 7 6. She'll be looking to push through now to the interval and get a couple of points lead, more breathing space. Beautiful smash down the line. As you were saying before, Mark, like, Olga doesn't possess the most power for a girl, but her shot accuracy it gives her lots of opportunities to follow up. points now. So where you start to feel it's going to be Olga's. I always feel it. We saw it last year. Olga played in the National Badminton League in, in England. And uh, if there was matches with no breaks and no uh, intervals, I think that would suit Olga much better. It's when you get a break, she has this tendency to switch off. Uh, because she really hasn't had that discipline throughout her coaching, uh, her, her, her badminton life. You know, going from place to place and finally finding a home in Germany. And uh, that's, that's the thing. I think Natalia needs to bear that in mind that there is that distinct possibility that there'll be a point in this game that Olga could just switch off for a couple of games. And she gets a lead and things like that. Do you think, Mark, that's from, you know, years of not having a coach at the breaks where she has to, you know, take control of her own thoughts? Or uh. why do you think that is? You know what? I don't know, and I also know that she doesn't know herself. So, <laughs> uh, one of those things. It's like Kirsty Gilmore. Kirsty Gilmore has become the three-set queen of, of, of international badminton. Go out, lose the first, and come back and win in three. Why? Because whatever preparation it may be for the match, whatever it's lacking concentration-wise in an opening game, 80% of the time she has this uh, knack of losing an opening game and doesn't get into it. Olga has the same thing. It's so difficult, I think, to keep that concentration levels all the time. I think it's worked well this week for her. Uh, Bob Blair was with her for a few matches. Now, Alain is there, a uh, singles player in his own right. Uh, someone she, she trusts, obviously, to say the right things at the right time. Olga can she goes on, takes a couple of quick points here. Patience on Italian. Oh, fantastic. Cross net winner. But a good rally from both girls, really. Tough class. That's a, bit, that's a crucial rally. Yeah. Psychologically as well as anything. It's five points between them, but. Uh, it's a I mean, that rally, such a high quality rally. Psychologically huge. Great net from Natalia. Must have been, yeah. yeah. We're going to just see if Hot Road can start to make a make our way back into this game. Lovely shot. Still. What can we do? Actually, that, that shot's quite easy with the racket, but her body's going one way and the shuttle's going the other, so that adds the deception. What a great shot for her. The young players watching him. You know, there's that flat serve. Finally, you have to say, Cockwood's starting to read it. Three 
points in that night. Comfortable that rally turn it right. That makes a really big difference. Good to see Olga, she's still being aggressive in her stroke, keeping the tempo high. Inter it will be interesting to see what Germany do with the women's team championship coming up. Yep. You know, I asked the question, can they afford to leave her out if they want to uh, even get out of the group? The tough group, I think, with France. Are Bulgaria in the same group? It really depends what their ambition is in the tournament. Mm. They have all That's it. it. Do, they, do they want to medal or do they not want to medal? Of course, they won it, remember, in 2012. Yeah. Schenk was number one, Conan was two, and uh, Schnaza was third singles. That's really good depth then. But it would be, it's no doubt, the German team with Olga Conan is a lot stronger. Of course, will be very strong in the ladies' doubles, first and second. And Snazza will be a good, strong first singles. We need two more players to back her up. And of course, uh, Fabian Dupree as well, who's a player that can come with some surprise ones if selected. No doubt that Fabian will be selected. She's in the national team, so. Uh yeah, it'll be it'll, it'll much will depend on their ambitions, given it's an Olympic year and is that the priority for their players. 16, Same will be of Spain, uh, who will travel to Kazan for Spain. Uh, Olga's done that a few times this week. Actually, a lot of players have done that a few times this week. Just a misjudgment of the baseline here. In the confined spaces of uh, the Baldol Abington Centre. Accuracy, not the power in that shot, the accuracy and the steep misses. It's very hard for Cockroach to get down low again for this one. Which, uh, very close to the I'm line. not sure if you agree. I think this, this point is now crucial. Yeah. If Olga wins it, you would fancy her to go on and win the tournament, which she has just done. Stretching into a six point lead. Half an hour just gone in the, in the match. Yeah, I think we can be with Olga's playing a lot better and really deserves to win this. She's been really pushing the tempo all the time. When Park Road, you thought she was coming back. Olga just kept being aggressive. Good tempo. It's been uh, really worth her win today. And if she does go on and win it, this will be her third win on the circuit since September. And that challenge level, not just series and uh, lower ranked tournaments. You would uh, expect that from someone of Conan which is in this format to be able to win these tournaments. That being said, they're very strong Olympic year, but she's definitely well good enough to win the challenge level. Yeah, yeah. Now this is the crucial point, Sam. 14. We're 14, 19, we were 19, 13 ahead. This is where she has a tendency to lose the concentration. Maybe she's <laughs> already seen the podium. Mm -hmm. That shot again. The body goes one way, shot goes the other. Great job. From Olga's perspective, she needs to focus, needs to you know finish the job off. The job is not done. Ali is not going to hand it to her. Definitely not. Beautiful net. Both players. Oh, it's a mistake from Natalia. Match point. Germany's Olga Conan. Exactly what Olga needed. Just a mistake in the net. Three point. Oh, brave. Very good shot. By <laughs> match point down and to go across net like that. 16, 20. Sometimes you know, these players, they just concede they've lost in the head and then they can go for these lovely shots. Yeah. 
Bracken hand relaxes just a bit. It comes to 19, can she still do it then? Crystal forcing the play with that air. Oh, Great. what a way winner. Finish. What a way to win it, Sam. Great shot. Deserved winner this week in Ireland. Germany's Olga Conan takes her first title of the year. Disappointment for, for Natalia. But I think after, after you said after she won that initial game against Blitzfeld, uh, the form was there to suggest that she could go on and win it. She's done it. Beat Linda Zachiri in the semi final, and now Natalia Kokroda in this final. Disappointment for Natalia. She's still on her comeback. She's, she's whacked. You can see her. But a good win for Olga. Takes her another 4,000 points in the bag, of course, and moving up the world rankings. We'll be back with the next match on court. It'll be the final match of the day, men's singles. Anders Anderson against Francis Lucas.